good new people it's your man animal brown checking in another episode of with that being said is here all right it's the only hip-hop show where you get points for your hot takes i got two guests today my returning champion press play jones and my partner bougie brother sean here to take the crown all right now you know how we get down five topics each one you get a point whoever wins wins the game goes on to the next show it's that simple Let's get things started with the return of music videos. This year has seen crazy videos. We had Drake giving out money in God's plan. We had Childish Gambino making the internet stop, but this is America. And just recently Eminem dropped a video and had a million gazillion views in 24 hours. My question to you, Jones, is the music video back? Why wow, we always gotta start with me? <laughs> okay. Uh yeah, I think I think we're slowly coming back to making great music videos like God's plan was like when he dropped that that was like man it I cried I mean <laughs> I guess I'm a female so maybe that made me a little more emotional but that video was like real and um Childish Gambino like that video made the song like because if he came out with the song and then did the video I wouldn't have understood it but that video was everything everything and what was the other one um, like Eminem or even somebody like a Machine Gun Kelly, his yeah. this record video propelled him, had people thinking he could hotbox with Eminem. So the video was doing amazing things this year. That's true. That's true. So, yeah, I, I agree with that statement. Like, it's a lot of dope videos coming back and it's not just the bottle popping in the club type videos like we need some real videos like we was talking about earlier with missy elliott like missy had the dopest videos ever like we need to bring that back we need a 106 and park back or something something like that so we can so we can create better content here we go sean now do we need a, a new music video show is, is it that time again talk to me well, no, I don't think it's yet time for the music video show because, um, I, honestly, I think YouTube is doing a great job with these, with just putting them out. Uh, like you said, Childish Gambino is really making a pivotal statement with his creativity. Um, I think these these videos are showing the creative side of, of the great artists that we're looking at. When you look at these videos, you see great artists. Childish Gambino may arguably be one of the best ones in our time and he's on his way to his climax his plateau and he's not even there yet and we're just kind of looking at the surface of him getting to that point even the Jay-Z and Beyonce video when they were in that museum you know um, as long as they've been in the game man they're still they're still breaking things and doing things that no one's done before so you know yeah the way the videos are going this year in due time I say about 2022 you know, we'll see a lot more music videos and a lot more artists putting music videos back with their music. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, that's just getting back hot again. You know, like you said, maybe this year. This year is probably like, yeah, like you said, the hottest video year since early 2000s. Oh, wow. Easy. All right, now, now, Jones, my question, you're managing an artist. Are you putting an emphasis on how dope their music video is or can you get by with the regular canon and you know, call, you know, a couple hundred dollars on the video, or are you telling them to blow the budget? You know, when I when I manage an artist, I don't just try to put out music. I try to create a superstar. So, like, in in creating a superstar, you have to put everything that you put out has to be quality. And I'm not about the like, oh, the booty shaking in the club or videos that don't have a storyline. Like, I have a female artist, so it's very important how you deliver that person because they you could deliver them as the ex stripper you could deliver them as a straight thought the <laughs> ghetto chick uh the ratchet chick no like i want like Aaliyah, like like that type of superstar not this one hit wonders light skin keisha type running on treadmill type chicks like no i want superstars i don't want no fly by night artists like at all so yeah content is is important and i just want to know that when we put stuff out like we're gonna kill everybody in the game so i like that very aggressive nature and i like the Aaliyah reference too but this round gotta go to sean he referenced the uh, beyonce and jay-z ape shit video 
in the Louvre Museum in Paris, and I got to visit that museum earlier. So Uh-oh. shout out to me uh, earlier this Bias. year. <laughs> so I got to give Sean that point. Uh, that's a super dope place. I need to visit that if y'all get a chance. They even had their own tour at the museum. Oh, nice. Lit. Uh, moving on. Topic number two. Starting with you, Sean. Now look. Cardi B and Nicki Minaj have been throwing subliminals at each other what seems like forever in a day. Uh, we know what happened in New York Fashion Week. Um, now, what do you see with the aftermath of this moving forward? Can this ever be mended? Honestly, no. Um, but most importantly, I think Cardi bounce back game is super strong. You know, like, who gets into a fight and then gets their makeup out the next day and sells out within hours, you know? Who, who gets a nod on their head and then drops a video and then that video goes viral, you know, like, you know, I, I think uh, it won't be mended because Nikki is just becomes so bitter and petty, personally. I mm-hmm. think I think she's just bitter and petty and she has a podcast where she only talks about Cardi. Like, you have the clout to be the best player you can be, but you're complaining about another player mm-hmm. on your platform. Like, who does that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I believe that as long as Cardi keep doing her thing, which she's always done, I believe this is just a situation of another strip club bitch hating on her. Wow. All right, Jones, let me ask you, is Nikki the queen? Is she stooping down to Cardi B's level? I would say, okay, first, first of all, Cardi wins versus <laughs> Cardi versus Nikki to answer the question. Um, Nikki, Nikki ain't showing nothing but what she's always showed everybody. Like Nikki's been a hater from the beginning. Her flow is just like a killer. So like, does she is she overall a better rapper than Cardi? Yes, but like Cardi's personality wins over all of that. And <laughs> bottom line is like, did Cardi get hurt? by the situation that happened she knew what was going down cardi already went to that event knowing that she was just gonna try to bust nikki head like sight. like yeah. like i said before maybe not on this show is that cardi took off her earrings before she started fighting what do most girls do before you start to fight you start taking your ish off and you ready to fight so she already knew what was gonna happen yeah was is it gonna help sales probably because she's supposed to be dropping an album this month too so maybe it was a promotional thing who knows but has it hurt her no it don't it doesn't seem like it hurt her that much um i'm i know some brands have pulled back and uh, maybe some people have pulled back from her but she's still making her coins so i at the end of the day cardi win this one who had the better album this year sean Ooh. the cardi or was it nick well, it, it depends. As an overall album, I would have to give it to Cardi. Lyrically, I would have to give it to Nicki. Mm. You know, I would say overall because the impact of what the album did when it came out. You know, the impact of it was was explosive. You know, there was there was singles on the album that you really didn't know were singles until everyone started listening to them. You know, and then with the Nicki Minaj, you know, the first half of that album was weak, was trash. You know, she if she would have turned the album, flipped the album upside down. Uh, I think it would have got a better response. But then you're complaining about not being number one. Mm-hmm. You know, then you're still trying to prove that you write all your rhymes. Who gives a fuck that you write all your rhymes? Okay, congratulations. What's next? Make another hit. That's what's next. Mm-hmm. And even though, you know, she brought a quality album, you know, it, I think I'd still put the Cardi album on. Jones, who had the better album? I definitely got to say Cardi won this round. I mean, Nicki had a couple songs that was like, it was hot. But overall, Cardi crossed over. Cross, that I like it like that, which was already a hit in the 90s. Like, she came back and made it a hit again. Like, who does that? She did the damn bicking head song with this chicken head. Like, come on now. Like, she, she, she killed it. Like, she had Kilani. She had, damn, Scissors. Uh, who, I mean, like, her album now it was, was, it was... It was, it was a was, record label album now. Don't like, get it twisted. It was definitely a record label album. You know, I mean, it was crafted. 
Yeah, yeah. As far as independently her creating that, I don't think she can create her own masterpiece like that. No, but at the end of the day, like, Cardi's the Selena of the hip hop industry right Ooh. now. Trap Selena. Trap, Trap Selena. Selena. I gotta give her a point, man. That day that she pulled out in the clutch. Yeah, yeah. Almost with the Trap Selena reference. It's tied up 1 1, going into this third topic. All right, one of the newcomers this year, Takashi69, burst on the scene in an unusual manner. Uh, mostly known for his antics uh, with some music to kind of go with it. He's got the numbers to back it up. We don't know how legit those are. But uh, my question is to Sean, is trolling uh, the new wave in hip hop, how long do you see that lasting for a Takashi, for example? I mean, I just, I just think Takashi, I mean, he trash, man. That, this trolling shit ain't gonna hold up. You know, it, it's gonna, it's short and sweet. You know, with with uh, with 50 Cent even joining in on the fun, it's like, it, it's petty, it's stupid, it's retarded, you know, but, you know, like I said, I don't even think, I don't even think nobody in the South even fuck with him like that, but I don't know where these 44 million views is coming from, That that's the weird part, so, you know, again, his trolling days is gonna be short and sweet, you know, I, I think once he decides to, you know, make himself bleed, you know, the... The, the Trump era and the jackass era, you know, it's coming, it's time is coming. Right, Jones, are you a Takashi fan? Hells no. Nah. Um, Takashi is a clown. He is the sideshow Bob of this generation. Um, but yeah, he has several fans because most people are idiots. Uh, <laughs> now, granted, I love that Fifi song. That shit go hard. But do I like him as a person? I want to see his, him get his ass whooped. That's what I really want to see. Like, I'm just, I'm tired of people like him. I'm tired of, I'm tired of people trying to create drama where no drama is even there. Like, nigga, you not a real thug. Like, for real. Like, let's see you on the streets, for real. Do y'all like, think that people believe his image or are is everybody in on the joke that he's trolling, Sean? That, there's a lot of kids who believe his image. Um, I was listening to uh, was listening to an interview with Vince Staples, and he actually explained how he was nine. He was born in 1993, and to hear a 1993 year a, a youngin from 1993 explain how, you know, when he was five, he was listening to Ludacris, and we're listening to Ludacris like, oh, this boy, he hard, you know. So I think there is a young generation that is following um, Takashi because when 50 was out and trolling he had a million fans you know so it sells you know kids like it young teens like it they can't wait for him to see what he's gonna do next but i believe 50. <laughs> like 50 had the whole look of being a gangster he really he really did get shot like several times like takashi is a clown <laughs> like he don't have a body he don't have a look he is a clown to me like he is something to be laughed at like Again, I call him Sideshow Bob. Like, with more tattoos. Like, I don't, I don't get why the kids are following him. But then again, we're in a different generation, so. Uh. I got to give this one to Jonesy for the Sideshow Bob reference. <laughs> Big Simpsons fans coming up. I know all about that. But that was a close one. Very good Fifty Cent reference. He's looked at as probably the OG Bobby Johnson of that trolling shit. Uh, with maybe Pac. Before him, with hit him up, what he yeah, said about faith, yeah. 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 But Fifty made a career out of it, and Takashi's following in his footsteps. We'll see where that leads from here. All right, man, it's a close race, round four. Um, we lost a couple of hip hoppers this year due to drugs. A little peep earlier in the year, Mac Miller a little bit later in the year. Uh, drug use is rampant through popular rap music now. Uh, my question to you, Jones. Um, is are we do people need to stop with the drug rap um the depression rap is this helping or hurting the culture one i i, I put the blame on the labels and i put the blame on uh like the radio stations like different media outlets we got to be more responsible in what we let our kids hear and see because you know people are really thinking this is real and then people popping mollies and doing all this stuff and living their best life as people say but it's really like killing people and we got to be more responsible i remember like when i was younger 
you couldn't hear certain words on the radio. Now it's like they just don't care. Like even the little bleep that they put on there, you could you know exactly what the word is. Before that couldn't even be in the song. Like so, I think we just got out of hand and and letting certain content get out on you know different media outlets and labels need to be more responsible in the people that they sign because a lot of these people come in with depression got issues but yet they're capitalizing on their issues and they need to like take care of it at, they need to nip that stuff in the bud right then they shouldn't even allow the certain lyrics to be displayed i get gangster rap and certain things need certain content in it but like telling kids to go out and pop mollies and thinking that's cool and i blank like future is one of them like you made a whole song that people just think like oh this is cool for me to do because future said it like we got we got to do better with our with our lyrical content it's like everything is not about taking drugs and popping mollies like and drinking like all the time so I think I think we just need to do better like creatively as artists labels need to do better in who they sign and media outlets need to be careful on what they actually put out because there are like five six year old kids that's listening to this and thinking it's cool. Sean who who holds the most responsibility uh, in the drug rap days? Oh man I think you're absolutely right about the the record labels but you know, some of our greatest artists were dope heads, crackheads, you know. So, honestly, taking a, taking that away from the art will take away from the artistic talent. You know, we, we clown Eminem for his last 10 years, but he's been sober those last 10 years. You know, but he's still lyrically there, but if he was drugged up, I, I'm pretty sure we would appreciate his music a little more than we're appreciating it now. You know, uh, and another thing is, I remember when I was young, you know, my favorite artist was Cameron and he was vulgar. He was he's an idiot. He's a, he's a pure asshole. And you can claim that you don't listen to or you can claim you don't follow what the music says. But by nature, you do, because it's something that's repetitive that you listen to. So I didn't wear pink, but I swear I was the flyest motherfucker in the, in the motherfucking streets because of what I listened to, you know, so. You know, when you're listening to Percocets, Molly Percocets, you know, with Future, there's no way around you thinking or wanting to try it, mm -hmm. you know, unless you already is in that environment and you know what it is. But, you know, there's a lot of suburban kids that haven't been and they will have to experience that because the music sounds good and it just goes along with the music. That's a good point. I got to get this from the Sean, the Cameron reference. Listen, I came up a big Cameron Diplomats fan. And yes, he was an asshole, and he was a dickhead, but he made some dope music. And, well, that was a close one, because Jones, you're absolutely right. The radio, back in the day, used to replace curse words with different words, and you would memorize the radio version, and sometimes the radio version would sound better than the real version. Nowadays, they don't even do that anymore. They don't make the radio cut. So that was a close one. Sean, I got to get that one to you, though. All right. Final round. Currency. One of the most consistent artists in the game right now on the underground level. So consistent that he's put out a project each month for the past year. He almost did that the prior year before. Uh, Jones, I'll start with you. Is putting out a project every month overkill? Um, me being in the industry, I definitely say that putting out a project every month is overkill. But you definitely want to stay consistent because we're in a generation where like our attention span is so short like so you definitely got to stay in in the attention of your fans because you let some months go by they're gonna forget about you because there's always gonna be somebody behind you that's coming up so do I think it's overkill to put out a project every month yes it's a little too much but no, I, I do think you still need to stay consistent and stay in the people's face. Mm -hmm. Sean, is he doing too much? Well, it definitely depends on the artist because if you was to ask me would I want to hear a Gucci Man album every month, I'd be like, hell nah, turn it off after the 15th track, you know. But for Currency, Currency kind of built his career around the consistency of bringing out, you know, five track mixtapes. He was probably one of the first ones to put out the, the five-track mixtapes, mm. you know. So 
you know, to a point it's overkill, but it definitely depends on the artist. Um, a month, a one every month. Hell yeah. Like, give me a breather. You know, make me miss you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, but, but I think for currency, it works for him because he's also an independent artist. And as an independent artist, the only way you can really get a buzz is if you do it yourself. So, you know, currency is kind of the, the fine line between yay and nay. Um, I, and I would say because of his longevity in the game. That's a good one. Sean, I got to give it to you. Currency is the perfect example of how this could work for someone on an independent level. You drop a project a month, you check the demographics, handpick the 10 or 15 best songs and tour every year, the same 20 locations. You can do that for the rest of your life, <laughs> and just like Currency has done and have a successful career. You, sir, had a successful episode. Yes, sir. All right, on with that being said, Sean, uh, you got the floor. Close it out. Yeah, you already know, man. Just make sure y'all check me out on IG, Bougie Brother Sean. That's B O U G I E. You probably see it right there, man. Other than that, man, you know, I got a podcast with my pop where we review music. So make sure y'all check this, that out, man. Go ahead and just search Google for Car Wax. Car Wax with two X's. There it is, and we out. Peace.